Welcome back to the channel guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, next few episodes are going to be all about this buggy. We got to do a complete tear down. The motor needs to be completely rebuilt. Trans needs rebuilt. And we got to do paint and powder on the chassis and all the panels. So, a lot of work to do. You guys uh, stay tuned and enjoy the videos. Okay guys, first things first, couple of things. I've never pulled the motor, the trans, or the transfer case out of this buggy, so I kinda wanna see what I have to disassemble and what I don't have to disassemble. So the first process of pulling out the powertrain is gonna be a little slow, but it's kind of a learning curve because when I built this, you know, you build the firewall and the, and the uh, tunnel as close as you can to all the powertrain and you don't really know what you can take apart without disassembling the whole firewall and powertrain so anyways we are going to be slowly disassembling this obviously got to pull the seats probably today and then basically disconnect all the wiring all that good stuff and uh, let's see what it takes to pull out the drivetrain um, and I think just to make this thing lower to the ground so I have clearance there to put the hoist and pull everything probably just going to set this thing straight on the concrete so i'll take off the the wheels and tires we'll unbolt those and we'll just drop it right on the hubs um i think i can do that i'm pretty sure i can so we are going to uh we're going to do that so let's start pulling this thing apart i think i got to mark a couple things first but um but yeah let's uh let's get to work macy oh how'd that feel on your toe buddy what are you doing Alrighty guys, I don't know if you can see that, but that is the oil plug after one run, so just caked with metal pieces, and they're not big pieces, there's some larger ones in there, looks like wire brush or something, but hi, hi Macy, but yeah, that is uh, no good, that's just one run on it, so we'll get a new motor in this thing, or get this one rebuilt, and uh, should be good to go.
Okay, so it has been a while. I think I haven't touched this thing in about two months. Uh, I just did clean up both passenger and driver sides and I kind of swept, picked up all my tools, all the loose bolts and nuts, and uh, I am ready to continue the journey into removing the powertrain. So that is what we are going to do today is figure out how to pull this thing and put it on the ground. So that's what's up. Alrighty guys, well this was a terrible idea. <laughs> I really wanted to pull it all at once and I started it and I just kept going with it. I should have stopped and just pulled the freaking motor off of the trans, but I didn't. So now I'm fighting this damn thing to try to get it the rest of the way out. So yeah, note to self, do not do this again. Just separate the freaking engine from the trans and pull them separate because this sucks anyways still got to come all the way out so let's go all right let's see what happens i got it's kind of separate i'm trying to separate the tks from the trans i kind of got a jerry rigged oh, the transfer case is going to be held on by ratchet straps on ratchet straps on ratchet straps and then i'm trying to yank this t case back and it's going to swing because i have the cherry picker on the you know this expecting to lift this so it's on the wrong setting or wrong hole to lift it at so I don't know let's see what happens I'm gonna make a loud bang holy smokes that worked really well <laughs> wow that was awesome All right guys, so I do gotta do a little bit of fab work. So these tabs are just too wide and causing the bump stop to be too far out. And it's slightly missing my pad. So if you can see, this is angled down because as this thing flexes down on this side, this bump stop use likes to compress all the way up and then skip underneath this pad. And it gets caught underneath here, causing you know damage to the actual pad. And it's really annoying because it's jammed underneath there on the trail. So. So something I'm gonna do is cut these off, move them as close inward as I can, and that should uh, fix this issue. So I think it's just a you know a slightly bad forelink, I guess, and it's causing it to 
shift just a hair so that bump stop can come over and underneath that pad. So anyways, got to cut it off, re-weld it back on. Well, I forgot to push play, but I got the uh, bump stop cans mounted inwards about an inch, uh, and that's definitely gonna take care of this slipping off the pad on this uh, outer side. So those are already done, good to go. Uh, on to the next thing, which I think I'm gonna try to fix this fair lead. I bent it down, it's only on just two quarter inch tabs. So I think I'm going to somehow beef those up, make this better, and straighten it. So let's get to that.
All righty. Wow. Ton of work today. Got this thing totally stripped down to just the frame or chassis or whatever you want to call this tubing beast. So it is completely stripped down and ready for powder. Now I do have some welding to do. I got a lot of tubes that I wasn't able to get when the whole powertrain was in. So I got tubes to weld, um, more welding on these, uh, little things here and there that just need to be finished welded. And then additionally, I also need to put the passenger side uh, panel tabs on. So I don't have any panel, panel tabs here. And I do on the other side, it's already in. But I have this side to do and this little fender area. And uh, we can officially load this thing up on a trailer and get it to powder coat. So. Alrighty guys, that is it on today's episode. This thing is ready to rock and roll and get over to powder coat. And I think I'm po pretty positive Ward Powder Coating, a guy named Nick who owns it. I believe he can get me in over there and I can actually watch uh, or video this thing getting powder coated. So that should be pretty cool. Anyways, if you guys like this build, check it out. Uh, subscribe, like, do all the good stuff and we will catch you on the next episode. Thanks guys.